Today on Nerd Out, new server hardware. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano. We break it down, but don't dumb it down. Today we're looking at a new piece of server hardware build that I did recently. Um, this is going to be an upgrade to the stake pools I'm running, plus maybe a Milkometa node, um, and running a whole bunch of testnet equipment. So there's actually two servers. I'm going to take you through the build of one of them. They're identical. Um, so let's jump into it. So first off, the, the physical structure. So I, I got a StarTech.com rack and some Rosewill cases for this. And they're both mounted on sliding rails, so you can kind of pull them in and out as, as you need to work on a given machine. So you can pull one in, take the top off, look at the guts, etc. cetera. Um, so the next thing I did is um, I ordered all the parts. Uh, there, is, there are chip shortages. I had trouble getting motherboards, so I had to buy open box motherboards. I got these um, Supermicro M12 SWA TF motherboards and when you're getting open box parts it's kind of a crapshoot so as you can see this uh, manual does not match what I actually got and the checklist is for a different motherboard as well some of these the rail kits for you know hard drive cooling devices are not the right stuff the back plate doesn't even fit this particular motherboard so you gotta you gotta kind of watch it when you're getting open box stuff and you got to know you know how to work with it and, and how to work around issues so I got the motherboard mounted in the in the case um, everything is is looking good at this point um, that's a pretty simple process just making sure all of your motherboard standoffs are in the correct spot for this particular motherboard because you don't want the bottom touching any of the metal it touches these little um, pillars underneath the motherboard. And so now I've got the, uh, the M2 SSD drives mounted on the motherboard. Um, these are very, very fast hard drives. They're nice and tiny um, and they operate very well. And we'll be setting them up in a RAID 1.0 configuration that we'll talk about a little later. Uh, next is to mount the CPU in the device, and we got a Threadripper Pro 3955WX. It runs with 16 cores and 32 threads, so it, it's um, a pretty powerful processor. Um, it's not, I didn't go all the way to the Epic um, that I used in a, in a previous build, or the current stake pools are running on an Epic, uh, but this will run at a slightly higher clock speed, so it should do better for running Cardano nodes and, and that worked out in my testing as well. Um, at the last epoch cutover I noticed that these machines finished the epoch cutover processing a lot faster, maybe about 30 seconds faster than the the Epic did. So blue cheese steakhouse pools will be getting a boost as well as uh, the Noom pool I run. Uh, next is to mount the heat sink on this processor. It's pretty straightforward. You just get it in there, mount it, screw it in tight, but not too tight, and tighten all the bolts in the correct fashion so it's not wonky or wobbly as you're getting it tightened. And making sure it's the airflow through the machine is from the front to the back as well. Next is to mount the RAM. So this machine is going to have 256 gigs of ECC RAM. Um, that's error correcting RAM so that any anomalies or whatever get corrected before it causes the server to, to crash or anything like that. So it's server level RAM is what we're putting in here. And this is just a picture of the RAM once it's mounted in the machine. And the next step I do is I usually flash the BIOS. I don't typically flash BIOSes a lot. Um, that's because if there's not a problem, manufacturers recommend that you don't flash it. Like if you're upgrading to a new CPU and maybe the BIOS has new support for it, whatever, um, I usually will flash it once before I install anything just to kind of get on the latest BIOS and then I'll never touch it again for, for many, many years. Um, there was a check in here for the ROM layout that, that says it failed, but it never 
cause me any problems uh, flashing the BIOS. Uh, the BIOS is the, the basic um, I.O. system, and that is like a chip on the motherboard that runs to get everything booted up before you've actually got an operating system running, if you're not familiar with that. Uh, so next was partitioning, and I want to talk quite a bit about this. So the way I've set it up is there's, there's two main partitions on the hard drive. The first one is the boot partition. And I've partitioned that as RAID 1, and RAID 1 is mirroring. So that means any time, uh, so four, all four drives look like one drive with all the same information. So if any one of them fails, I can still use a different one to boot the machine up. And, you know, then I'll have time to swap out the failing hard drive and, and um, keep everything running. So this was setting up the MD0 RAID partition and it is again mirrored there. Um, the second one I got some advice from Hold Your Heart, Holger Hartstock, who is the tech lead over at Liquid Finance. He also runs the ADA pool, um, also known as Cardano 24. And um, I talked to him a little bit about what RAID I should use for, for this other. Since I only had four drives, he suggested uh, RAID 10 or RAID 10. And this is striping plus mirroring so basically two of the hard drives um, are used where uh, where you mirror and then basically you have two sets of two so the, these two are mirrored and where's my other fingers there these two are mirrored and then it'll write bytes or chunks to it you know one chunk to these two and then the next chunk to the next two back and forth so you get some more space and you're technically able to, to lose two hard drives and still be operational if you lose the correct two hard drives. If you lose, you know, both of a whole pair, then, then you know, you're, you're screwed at that point. But um, these drives are pretty resilient that I'm using the, the FireCuda Seagates. So they have some good reviews on them. So yeah, this is a RAID 1.0 partition, and again, shout out to Holger, and um, if you like what he's doing over there, check him out. He's got a really nice pool he runs. So the final setup, the final partition, we've got um, the EFI mount point, that's just a gig or so, and that's to, um, to run a boot process. And then we have the actual boot partition where, you know, the kernel lives and all that stuff. And then we have the, the root mount point. Now, in the past, when I've done, you know, Linux systems, you, you do a whole lot more partitions or you do LVM on top of it, logical volume management. But um, I decided not to go with that this time because they're already M2 drives. And, you know, partitioning is mostly so you can kind of keep sections of bytes together when you're working with spinning disks. But on M2 disks, they're spraying the bytes randomly across the whole disk anyway, so there's not a lot of benefit to it. So I just put a single mount point of the root slash for, for everything, and I'm not going to worry about it. So that's the final setup, and then you see here, this is booted into the BIOS, and you can see the, the processor is alive. But it wasn't all roses. I did some burn-in testing. Uh, burn-in is a process where you, you know, run a little process that peaks the CPU and exercises the memory, and, and um, you see I have a, a kernel panic here. And I fought this for a couple days, and then finally it turned out that it was a problem with the burn-in software and not an actual problem with the, the hardware device, because it always kept crashing in the exact same spot, and it's uh, a software level crash. So I moved on and everything is working well with the pools at this point. And that's all I've got for today. So with that, nerd out.